Peter, you know, what we want to talk about today was connecting with your audience. And your audience could be anywhere from one person to thousands or millions of people. Yeah, we often think of audience as being 25, 50, 100,000 people. When it really, as you just said, can be one person across a desk. It can be 10 people in a conference room. And you must connect with those people. And connecting with them is not showing up and throwing up and just giving them information and more information and the like. It's how do you have a conversation with them? You know, years ago, going back thousands of years it, to just a few hundred years ago, it was oration. Someone would get up and speak for an hour, two hours and go on and on and on. And then it became a speech and then it became a presentation, then a talk. And now I believe they're conversations and a conversation is a two way street and an audience is more engaged when they're doing the talking. Mm -hmm. All right. So the big question there is, OK, if I'm I'm doing a presentation, how is the audience doing the talking? They can be speaking with you, having a conversation with you without saying any words. Mm -hmm. They can be having the conversation in their heads. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to accomplish that? Well, one of the things is what I just did. Questions. When you ask someone a question, they will answer it. My question is, number one, how do you know what the audience, what type of questions the audience is going to ask? And then number two, how do you educate them to know the flaws and to really kind of let other people involved speak? <laughs> okay, the first one is understand who your audience is. What do they want and need to know? That'll generally start to get you in the area of knowing what questions they'll ask because they're going to want to know something or they need to know it. Like I said, it's always what they want and need to know. So you can develop your questions there. So when you ask them a question, again, they answer in their head. You pause. Now they're engaged. Now you're having a conversation, even if they can't answer. To answer your second question, have that conversation with your guest before you guys get on the air and say, I have some questions that I'm going to want to ask along the way. Please pause when you make a point and allow me to have a follow-up question. You know, we say in sales or communication, anything like that, that the greatest sound anybody will ever hear is their own name mm -hmm. because they know it's about them at that point. Well, their own name, but if you have an audience of 30, you can't say every name, use the word you. Using the word you makes me understand that it's about me. Yep. And think about how we say it in everyday conversations. I might say, hey, thanks for the idea, Emilio. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm thanking you. But isn't it better if I say thank you for your idea? Little simple things make it register with us in a conversation. And when we're having a conversation with 30 people, use the word you. It resonates with them. Another one. Words like or phrases like write this down and make sure you pause after you, <laughs> after you say whatever you say to give them a chance to write it down. As presenters, sometimes <laughs> we know to use the phrase write it down, then we say what we're going to say, and then we keep on talking. If I go out and get hit by a bus this afternoon and you take only one thing away from this, always remember this, which is it's always about the audience. But that's another way to do it. Remember this. It's just like write this down. It triggers things in people's brains that this is important. <laughs>